Hi everyone. I uh, wanted to take a moment to go through the muscles um, of the different regions. And so one of the problems with the lab manual is that, of course, it has a lot more muscles than we expect you to know. Um, so I wasn't able to remove the lines, but I was able to remove the majority of the excess labels. Um, so I'm hoping that this will be helpful for you as you study the muscles. Um, so we're going to start with the cephalic region, um, and there's um, there's some facial muscles you need to know, and then there's some muscles that cover kind of the scalp and the dorsal surface. surface. Um, so let's start um, with these two muscles right here. So we have this obicularis oculi and obicularis oris. Um, and both of these muscles are circular muscles, otherwise called sphincters. And so when we see sphincters, we know that they're going to be kind of um, allowing um, an opening to get bigger or smaller. And so the obicularis oculi allows our eyes to close, and the obicularis oris allows our mouth to pucker, like our, you know, when you pucker your lips. Um, so those are those two similar sounding but different muscles. Um, we have the zygomaticus, and the zygomaticus comes from that zygomatic bone um, and comes down. We also have the masseter muscle, and the masseter muscle attaches kind of at the um, zygomaticus, zygomatic bone and the zygomatic arch. Um, and then also attaches into the mandible. And so if you remember the word mastication means to chew, this masseter muscle is the chewing muscle. Um, we also have this large muscle that covers the superior part of our skull. We're really just focused on this part. So if you're just looking at this muscle, the name that is used is typically the frontalis. Um, or if you're looking at it as this large group of muscles, it would be the frontal belly of the epicraneus. Um, the other muscle that we have on this slide um, that we're going to look at is the trapezius. And so the trapezius is a really large muscle um, here at, there's an attachment at the occiput, and then it comes out and it attaches to the um, scapula, and then it's going to attach to the spinous processes of the thoracic and cervical vertebrae. Um, so that's what we want to do here. So here is that obicularis oris being used. Here is the obicularis oculi being used. And here is that frontalis being contracted. Okay, so it lifts your eyebrows and wrinkles your forehead. Um, the next muscle is a neck muscle, and I love this muscle. It's the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Um, so the name says it all. It's attached at the sternum, the clavicle, and the mastoid process. Um, and if you just correct, sorry, if you just contract one of your sternocleidomastoid muscles, it's going to move your ear to your shoulder. And if you contract both of them, it kind of gives you lots of chins, right? So like it kind of pulls your, um, pulls your chin in, um, and, and gives you some extra chins. Um, we're going to move down to the abdominal muscles. Um, and then abdominal muscles. So there's the rectus abdominis, um, which forms you know, if somebody has a six pack, that's, those are the muscles that you're seeing. Um, in between the rectus abdominis muscles, you see this um, connective tissue called the linea alba. And I'm only going to mention this because sometimes when people are pregnant, um, that tissue separates. Um, and so that's called recti rectus, um, diastasis, yeah, rectus diastasis, rectus um, diastasis. I forgot it for a second. Um, and, but so when that um, tissue separates, it can lead to, you know, intestines kind of making their way out, causing a little bit of a hernia. It also causes back pain and muscle strength and balance on either side. So other than the rectus abdominis, we have um, three layers of muscles. So on the outside, 
So we're looking on this area of the abdomen now. And so on the outside, we have the external obliques. And the external obliques, the fibers are going to um, move inferior and medially. So they move down towards the pubic bone and the pubic region. Um, the internal obliques, which is the next layer in, the fibers are diagonal, but they're moving towards the sternum, right? So they're still diagonal, but they're moving kind of in the direction of the opposite shoulder. And then we have the transverse abdominis. And the transverse abdominis, um, the fibers for that muscle are horizontal. Um, and so you can imagine it as a really thick belt around your abdomen. So again, external oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis. So that's from um, superficial to deep. Um, if I'm going to ask you about any of the deep muscles, I'm going to ask you on an illustration because the muscle model that we have in the lab practice only shows the external obliques and the rectus abdominis. Okay, um, so now we're going to look at those dorsal muscles. And I mentioned the trapezius already. And so this is just one side of the trapezius. So it's you know a muscle that has both a right and left muscle. Um, so we see the occiput, we see the scapula, and we see the spinous processes where this muscle attaches. And so um, you can kind of tell just by looking at this that one of its jobs is raising the shoulders. Okay. Um, another muscle is the deltoid. And the deltoid, there's um, the posterior, medial, and anterior deltoid. Um, so it's kind of a group that's all considered one muscle. Um, and so there's a lot of movement that the deltoid does, but the, um, the biggest movement is abduction. So it moves your arm away from your trunk. Um, and then we have the latissimus dorsi. And so the latissimus dorsi um, are muscles that are involved um, kind of when you're uh, some parts of a push-up are um, dealing with those muscles. Um, certain types of twists will deal with the latissimus dorsi. Um, and so we're going to move to the upper limb muscles. Um, and so here is the pectoralis major. That's the big chest muscle. And you can see the anterior part of the deltoid. Now, the if you're in anatomical position, the muscle that is on your upper arm that's anterior is going to be the biceps brachii. And I'm not super, a super big fan of the way that these are labeled. So the biceps brachii is pointing to this muscle right here. I don't think the line going to the triceps is really clear that it's the muscle in back. Okay, so the anterior muscle is the biceps brachii. Um, if you, you know, flex like Popeye, you've uh, contracted your biceps brachii. Um, your triceps are involved in, um, in push-ups. Um, particularly when your hands are um, spread apart from one another. Um, so the, hopefully that gives you an idea of those muscles. And so this is an illustration of the triceps brachii. So we have the biceps and the triceps brachii. I'm um, going to go down here, so down to the lower limb muscles. Um, and the first muscle we're going to look at is my favorite muscle. It's the sartorius muscle. Um, and so sartorius um, comes from the Latin for tailor, which is sartorial. Or, um, and so um, sartorius is named such because it allows you to cross your legs. So think about a, um, like pictures of old fashioned tailors. They would have their sewing kind of on their lap and their legs would be crossed with their ankle to their knee, opposite knee. Um, and so that's what that muscle does. It kind of um, externally rotates and um, also flexes the thigh. We have the gracilis muscle, which is an adductor, so it moves the leg closer to midline. Um, and then we have this group of the um, quadriceps. So there's the rectus femoris, which is the biggest quadricep muscle. We have the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis. 
There's also a vastus intermedius, but it's actually deep to the quadriceps femoris. Okay. Um, now we're going to go to the posterior muscles. Um, we have the gluteus maximus. Um, we have the hamstrings, which is another group of muscles. So this big muscle right here is the biceps femoris. Um, and then we have the this muscle right here is the semitendinosus. And then the semimembranosus um, is partially under that semitendinosus and a little bit more medial. So this is also part of that semimembranosus. Okay, down to the lower limb muscles. So here we have um, the tibialis anterior, which is just lateral to the tibial bone, to the tibia. Um, and we have the gastrocnemius, which is your large calf muscle, your lar large um, superficial calf muscle. Um, and it attaches to the calcaneal tendon. That's also sometimes called the Achilles tendon. And we also have the soleus. And the soleus is the muscle that's deep to the gastrocnemius. And so when you hear soleus, you might think of the fish sole or um, the sole of your foot, which is the large kind of flat part of your foot. And the soleus muscle is a pretty large flat muscle. That's why it has its name. Um, so I hope going through these um, different muscles helps you. I strongly encourage you to... Um, to do the movements that these muscles do while you're studying, that's going to help you learn them. Um, if you want to buy some washable markers and draw the muscles on yourself or on somebody else who's willing, um, that's also a really good way to study. Okay, take care.